We are asked to solve the given quadratic inequality and then state the solution using inequalities, interval notation, and a graph. Looking at the given quadratic inequality, let's first set the right side equal to zero by subtracting 4x on both sides and subtracting 60 on both sides. The given inequality is equivalent to x squared minus 4x minus 60 greater than or equal to zero. The first step is to solve the related quadratic equation, which is x squared minus 4x minus 60 equals zero. Let's solve by factoring. The left side factors in are two binomial factors. The factors of x squared are x and x. The terms in the second positions are the factors of negative 60 that add to negative four because negative 10 times positive six equals negative 60 and negative 10 plus six is equal to negative four. The two factors we need are negative 10 and positive six which means one binomial factor is x minus 10 and the other is x plus six. Continuing to solve, the product on the left is equal to zero when x minus 10 equals zero or when x plus six equals zero. Solving for x here, we have x equals 10. Solving for x here, we have x equals negative six. And now we plot these values on the number line and because the original inequality is greater than or equal to, these two values are going to be part of the solution because these two values make the expression on the left equal to zero, which will satisfy the inequality. So we plot these two values as closed points on the number line. In general, when the original inequality symbol is greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, we plot the zeros or solutions as closed points, again because of the equal part. If the original inequality is greater than or less than, we would plot the zeros or solutions as open points because they would not be part of the solution. And now we select a test value from each subinterval. We test a value to the left of negative six, a value between negative six and 10, and a value to the right of positive 10. So for the test values, let's test x equals negative seven, x equals zero, and x equals 11. And we substitute these values back into the original inequality or if we want this inequality here, where we have a zero on the right. Let's use this inequality here, where we have a zero on the right. Substituting negative seven for x gives us the square of negative seven minus four times negative seven minus 60, greater than or equal to zero. Simplifying, the square of negative seven is 49, and this simplifies to plus 28 minus 60, greater than or equal to zero. 49 plus 28 minus 60 is equal to 17. 17 greater than or equal to zero is true, and therefore the interval on the left is also true. And now let's test the interval in the middle using the test value of x equals zero. Substituting zero for x, we have the square of zero minus four times zero minus 60 greater than or equal to zero. The left side simplifies to negative 60. Negative 60 is not greater than or equal to zero, and therefore the interval in the middle is false. And now we test the interval on the right using x equals 11. Substituting 11 for x gives us the square of 11 minus four times 11 minus 60 greater than or equal to zero. 11 squared is 121. And then we have minus 44 minus 60 greater than or equal to zero. The left side simplifies to 17. 17 greater than or equal to zero is true and therefore the interval on the right is also true. This indicates that our solution is when x is greater than or equal to positive 10 or less than or equal to negative six. So this is the graph of our solution. Let's also state the solution as an inequality as well as using interval notation. Remember to the right we approach positive infinity, to the left we approach negative infinity. So using inequalities, the solution is when x is less than or equal to negative six or when x is greater than or equal to positive 10. Using interval notation, we have the interval from negative six to negative infinity. We include negative six and therefore we have a square bracket to the right of negative six. We never include positive or negative infinity and therefore we have a rounded parenthesis to the left of negative infinity and then u for union 
the interval from 10 to infinity, including 10, so we use a square bracket to the left of 10, and we use a round of parenthesis to the right of infinity. Here is the solution expressed as a graph using inequalities as well as using interval notation. And before we go, let's check our work graphically. To check it graphically, let's use this form of the inequality and we graph the function f of x equals x squared minus 4x minus 60 on the coordinate plane as shown here. Because we are trying to find the x values for which the expression is greater than or equal to zero, we locate the part of the function that is above the x-axis or on the x-axis. A function is positive above the x-axis, a function is equal to zero on the x-axis, and a function is negative below the x-axis. So let's highlight the part of the graph that is above the x-axis or on the x-axis. The graph is on the x-axis at the x-intercepts, which is this point and this point. This is where the function values are zero, which does satisfy the inequality, and then the function values are positive on this part of the graph and on this part of the graph. And the solution is the set of x values for which the function is above or on the x-axis. And therefore the solution is when x is greater than or equal to 10 or less than or equal to negative six. So this graph does verify our solution is correct. I hope you found this helpful.